Uh, nice to see you here. Um, I was hoping for a bit more people, but uh, it's fine like this. We'll keep it friendly. They are online. Sorry? Hundreds of them are online. Really? Yeah. Ah, okay. Hi, even more people. Uh, so, uh, this will be a presentation about uh, um, uh, generally AI image generation tool like uh, Stable Diffusion or uh, Mid Journey or uh, DALI 2. Uh, it's not going to have a linear structure. There's not going to be a PowerPoint because, in this case, I don't think it has the power or it doesn't make any point. Uh, so. I'm just going to use my uh, image library here and I'm going to eventually remote to my computer where I can run a stable diffusion uh, with a more powerful GPU. Uh, but I'm going to start with a small introduction of myself. I'm Aurel Mania. I am a technical artist as a day job. I am an artist, or I hope I am. It's complicated to see what's an artist and what's not. I. Uh, I started uh, as a 3D artist when I was 12 years old, when I kind of gave up school and uh, went my own way with newer and cooler uh, things that I could do. Uh, I then at 18 I got hired in uh, Pro TV, a television station that you all probably know, where I did some uh, VFX, uh, you know, uh, media, advertising uh, stuff. Uh, then after three years I uh, moved on to Gameloft, a gaming company that uh, used to do mobile games. It still does. I've been here for uh, almost 17 years. Uh, I'm going to stand now if it's okay. It's because I need to stay close to the computer. Uh, from there I went from 3D artist to technical artist to uh, studio 3D technical director, and then uh, senior technical artist at this point. This has been a trip for 70 years, 17, sorry. Uh, I am a bit nervous, though, so you have to excuse me. Um, I say a lot of uh. uh. Around 17 years ago, also, I started as a photographer. Actually, I'm a quite known photographer in Romania. You can look me up on Facebook or uh, my website. Uh, photography for me it was uh, very important and also AI tools because I kind of suffer from aphantasia. I don't know what, if you know what that is, is the inability to make mental images. I mean, you tell me to think uh, of a triangle, I cannot visualize a triangle. Not even a point, nothing. There's empty. I can think about the symbols what makes a triangle, what makes a bicycle, but I cannot visualize it. So I never had the ability to properly express thoughts. So photography, because uh, it didn't require imagination, I had reality there and I have uh, good aesthetics. Uh, it was an extension of me and it, uh, I enjoyed it a lot. A lot. But then came uh, those tools uh, with uh, diffusion models around five uh, months ago that were amazing and they allowed me to be quite creative and uh, explore my own imagination. Uh, I started uh, around five uh, months ago with uh, a very entry level, it was the grandfather of Mid Journey and uh, Stable Diffusion, it was called uh, Disco Diffusion. It was still a diffusion model, uh, open source, you could run it on your computer. The results were spectacular uh, visually and uh, aesthetically. They were completely incoherent uh, regarding content. You had floating buildings or uh, stuff that doesn't make any sense, multiple tens of hands instead of two half heads, stuff like this. But it was quite amazing because you could do this with just words. I will show you later what I mean when I show you the comparison of how it was five months ago and how uh, it is now. Basically back then I stayed around uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to generate an image. So it was quite time consuming. I spent a lot of uh, uh, nights doing this 
it was quite an addiction. It still is. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, for a lot of people, it's a form of addiction. And it's actually a form of consumption, because if you do this over and over and over, you screw up your uh, endorphins and uh, stuff in the head, and you don't get the rewards, and then you need to do more. So I, I, I suffer from this sometimes, and a lot of people do. They don't, they don't realize, so you need to take a break from time to time. I think I generated over 10,000 images, much more, in the past five months. So, yeah. Because it's never good enough. It's never, I don't like this, I can do better. And then technology changes, and then you need to write uh, new types of prompts. What you learn at Inland uh, doesn't make any sense. You have to switch uh, tools, go from a mid journey, go to DALI, go to uh, stable diffusion again. So it was quite a trip, and things are changing really fast. So after disco diffusion, I'm going to try to keep this uh, shorter because uh, we started a bit uh, later. After uh, disco diffusion came uh, mid journey, the first version, which was again amazing at that time. Instead of uh, 20 minutes for an image, I waited one minute or so. It was much more coherent. It did have a very specific style, and a lot of things didn't make any sense, but it was way better. So it was revolutionary. Unfortunately, it was with a subscription. So in this case, I had to pay a subscription, but I had to pay it because I really liked it. And then came uh, DALI 2. That was quite amazing at that time. I was, by the way, a beta tester for DALI 2, for uh, Mid Journey, and for Stable Diffusion. So I caught the very interesting uh, starting points of them all. So DALI 2. DALI 2 was very nice, but I really did not like it at all, even though it uh, really gave a coherent and uh, photographic uh, imagery of people and animals and stuff like that. But the pricing was way too high, and the censorship was incredibly high. I mean, you couldn't uh, do like a concept of a gun or stuff like that, or uh, in your case, a Ukrainian person. It, did, it doesn't allow you. I think it's because of the conflict there. Also, a Russian you couldn't do. Also, a cockroach for reasons of the words and things like that. So I really didn't uh, like uh, DALI, even though it's made by uh, OpenAI, which meant uh, that in the start they wanted to be open and open source and release their models, but then Microsoft came along and then invested in them, then they became the closest, closest of the AIs, all of them. And then the happy thing happened. Uh, I saw this post by Ahmad uh, Mostak, which is the CEO of uh, Stability AI, the one that made uh, Stable Diffusion. And uh, I joined their beta with uh, maybe a couple of thousand people compared to hundreds, tens of millions that use Stable Diffusion at this point. So I got into the beta. It was really amazing. I generated a lot of images with the community there. I saw their prompts. I, saw, I learned a lot of prompting there. I saw the potential. Uh, I posted a lot of uh, on social media, and I kind of contributed to their success because uh, as a photographer, I thought uh, at one point, hey, why don't I try to generate some photograph uh, landscape photography? Uh, so I chose my favorite uh, photographer, Mark Adamos, and I tried to generate some landscapes uh, in his style. And they were amazing, and uh, so I wrote uh, an email to Petapixel, which is, uh, I think, the biggest site regarding photography. And they were really interested about this. So they wrote an article uh, about me, about uh, stable diffusion, about the future of photography. It went viral. A lot of sites uh, contacted me for uh, uh, interviews and write some more info. So I got a bit of free celebrity from five words, which was quite nice. Uh, and it also added a lot of um, um, advertising for uh, stable diffusion. So I, I like to think that I contributed a little, to, a little to them also. What was nice about stable diffusion, and uh, because your role uh, take is here, I see, is that it's uh, free, it's open source, it's unlimited, it's uncensored. 
uh, and in case there's something missing from it, you can train it yourself. If you want more nudity or it doesn't uh, work well, you can train it with uh, nude photos. Or if you want uh, to add persons that are missing from the model, you can train it with those persons or uh, the styles that you, you want in your generating images, generated images. Um, so I loved it and I saw a lot of potential there. I, and I think there's a lot of potential there. Uh, and for some time it was the, the best of the models and of the systems and I played a lot uh, with them. I even trained my own models that I'm gonna show you here because it's uh, really cool what you can do with it. But then came uh, the latest version of Mid Journey, like two weeks ago. It happened really fast. That w went way beyond uh, what uh, Stable Diffusion could do. And I, after this, I'm going to show you comparisons of how everything evolved. Uh, basically, now, uh, if you look at the images, they're way better than any previous uh, digital artist could do. I mean, they're all inspired from this uh, existing artist. But they also added uh, community feedback. You rate images, the ones that you like. So it actually forced the style in a democratic matter. And uh, now the aesthetics uh, tend to be the best they can that they like. Most pe people like them. So they, did, they went beyond whatever uh, could have been done uh, in the past. So at this point, I can only recommend uh, Mid Journey as uh, your main tool um, for generating images. It costs around $30 per month to basically use it unlimited, un in an unlimited matter. But uh, it's quite worth it, especially if you're an artist or you need to generate many, image, and many images, uh, the highest quality. So now let me show you what I mean by the evolution of it. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, my favorite uh, series. Each iteration of the systems, I uh, did uh, some images with Bucharest because it's my hometown and uh, I wanted to see a rendering of the AI of it. So these were disco diffusions. As you can see, style-wise it's really good. This one looks like an oil painting, but if you look, m uh, buildings are floating, this doesn't make any sense. Nothing makes any sense. This looks look like people, but they're not really people. Um, you had a lot of artifacts in the air, parts of trees. But it was still beautiful. So I did a lot of them. Again, you have some Bucharest symbols, like uh, building tops of type of architecture, but it's not really there. Again, a lot of uh, floating stuff. The same, the same, basically. Uh, sorry, they're a bit repetitive. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't make any sense. It's low quality and doesn't make, doesn't mean anything. Then came the first version, uh, version of Mid Journey. As you can see, it's still full of artifacts and it feels a bit dirty, but uh, it has much more coherence in the images. By the way, the biggest uh, problem with uh, AIs is the coherence. Each version it gets better, but uh, there's still multiple heads or heads missing or uh, the most well-known one, the number of uh, fingers on the hand. If you want to know if a picture is fake, nowadays you look at the hands. If there's something wrong with the, wrong with the fingers, there's more fingers, less fingers, missing hands, multiple hands. At first sight, they're not obvious, but if you look closely, you'll see a lot of these things. So this is one way to live in this post-truth uh, world. You check the hands. Again, quite good looking, quite not Bucharest. It doesn't look like Bucharest. The cars don't mean anything. The people don't mean anything. But then came uh, stable diffusion. Uh, okay, you have more coherence. Looks a lot more by, like Bucharest. Uh, people seem a bit like people. It kind of feels like a city. Uh, it's low quality, unfortunately. The windows are not quite there. Well, the style I chose for this is also very, very painterly, uh, so uh, it kind of makes sense. But 
I was quite impressed back then. Uh, especially this one, this one is more coherent. I like the lighting. I also, as a photographer, do a lot of uh, sunsets and sunrises, so I'm obsessed with uh, this light. And the cherry on top. This was a series I did uh, three days ago that went really viral on social media. I kind of feeling it would, because it's based on another viral uh, series from uh, New York. But let me see what, let me show you what I mean. This is Bucharest in uh, the 1920s, or uh, an AI rendition of it. You can see the uh, leap in quality to everything that was before. Uh, I mean, which sorry? Uh, which model, which version? This, this is Journey in version 4. This, uh -huh. is the, uh, this is the last one. And that's what I mean by the leap in quality. I mean, it's almost there. The, the signs of host course never make any sense in AI generated images, the texts are wrong. Uh, the car probably doesn't exist in the reality. The clothing is probably not what it should be for Bucharest in those times because if there's missing data in the model, the AI uh, auto completes with something from the model that exists that makes sense in the context. So if it doesn't have photos of uh, Romanian people in the 1920s, it's going to fill up with uh, Englishmen or uh, Americans from that period. So it'll have uh, a lot of things that are not quite from there. But generally speaking, it feels like Bucharest. It has the architecture. It feels like the little Paris that uh, we like to call it before uh, the communists came and uh, ruined, ruined everything. It's usually beautiful, the lighting is beautiful, the bokeh, the blur is beautiful. You can see there's a lining wall that's um, floating in the air. Um, the traffic light shouldn't be there, it didn't exist at that time. But generally, at first sight, it's just wonderful to see, it's really impressive. Yeah, again, a guy with a missing head in the right, with the umbrella. Um, a guy with a shrunk head, some cars in the background that doesn't, don't make sense. But the architecture feels like Bucharest. I mean, um, it's not a real street that exists, but it's a street that could exist. So, uh, it's more like Vienna. You know the history of Bucharest more than yeah. When people are passionate about uh, certain stuff, if they're more into anatomy, they see these uh, things that don't make sense instantly. If they're into history, they see them instantly. I don't know about any of this. I'm into lighting and uh, atmosphere and composition, so it's okay. From this, uh, thing. I even tried some series with the communist era. I'm not sure I got it right. I try to make the people more uh, sad and uh, lost, depressed, yeah. And this is my rendition. This is how I feel it would have been there. I, I didn't live through the era. You probably lived more through it, so you get... Was it a bit like this? A bit. A bit, yeah. It's an exaggeration to... More like Central Europe populism, like Brad or something. Here? I would say, yeah. It was sadder there? Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that uh, you can do with... Uh, I, 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 oh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. Yeah, uh, this should be a Dacia car. It's a half Dacia car, I think. Yeah, I, I said it for... Yeah, yeah, it's a Lada, actually. I wrote Dacia, but... You know, Dacia 1300. So it's not also kind of a Lada. Good for you for knowing all the cars. <laughs> Is there anyone? Yeah. I only started this series. I'm not. To the right of Zastava. To the right of what? Zastava. That one? The yellow one, yeah. I never even heard of this. Ah, I no, I think my. Is my journey? Do they still generate through Discord or 
Yeah, unfortunately, it's one of the downsides of uh, Mid Journey. I'm going to take. Uh, it's it's really strange uh, interface to generate through uh, Discord, but I think they did this because uh, this way you have a community. You see the prompts from other people, and you learn from them. And the model grows; it learns more about what people like. So they try to keep it social. Yeah, it's really chaotic. Uh, if, uh, but this is only if you don't pay and you only have 20 free images or so. But if you do pay, you get your own private bot that you talk directly to. And it's only your uh, conversation with it. Yeah, but uh, you only get like 20 images per month for free. After that, you have to pay and you get your own bot. The lowest. Uh, Subscription is like ten dollars, uh, but you don't generate a lot of images with it. You have to pay thirty to have mostly unlimited access, and you also have to pay twenty more. So they're private, so people don't look at your prompts and copy your images. So they have this very strange policy where just to be private, you pay twenty dollars. I'm not sure. I'm not too good at these things. I think that it's similar to DALI and Stable Diffusion, but I think they have uh, like prompt injection, so they add words in the prompt that make uh, the images uh, have certain uh, aesthetic. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's okay. It, it's it's non-linear, so there's no actual slope. Uh, yeah. One thing I found really cool with uh, Stable Diffusion, besides it being free, uncensored, and everything, it's uh, an all-you-can-eat buffet, basically. If you accept the limitations now compared to uh, Mid-Journey, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. You install it on your own computer, and you do whatever you want with them. But one fun thing is uh, to just... Uh, Train your own models with your own face, like I did here. Well, it was back in one month ago, so I had a different haircut and less of a beard. But it kind of looks like me. Uh, it's, uh, Mid Journey allows you to do something like this to a certain extent. You can upload a photo, but in, it's going to generate an image based on the structure of that photo. You cannot render yourself uh, as a, a Pixar character from the side or some, something like this. While with uh, stable diffusion and training your own models with your image, training your own model with your image uh, means that you expose the uh, AI model to these photos of you. You set up a keyword for them, so it learns that within these photos, the, there is something called Aurel Mania. And it looks at the photos and see patterns. They see similarity in them. So if you set photos with, from multiple angles or maybe multiple uh, periods of your uh, life, not too far apart, it will learn what it means to be you. And the more variation you give it, and the more uh, different uh, the clothing, the background, and stuff like this, the more it will isolate you as a, a concept in its, uh, in its uh, brain, basically. So this this is a, a training I did with only 30 pictures that I took in a single day in the same place. So it's a really bad uh, way of training the model. But I still got some very interesting results. I mean, Howard, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, look away. I'm gonna go to my uh, Google Drive. Hope there's not something bad there. Uh, let's see. Uh, training sets. Uh, me. Sorry, I had a really. I didn't sleep that day, but it's just like this. From the top. Yeah, you can see my eyes. I'm sleepy. Uh, one is smiling, one uh, maybe frowning a bit. Not too exaggerated, uh, but not too similar. Can you train the free version of Mid Journey? Or 
No, 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 it's stable diffusion. You cannot train mid-journey. It's a closed system. It's a closed ecosystem. You can basically can't do something that it doesn't uh, allow you to do. Because they want to avoid controversy, they want to avoid uh, uh, like uh, uploading photos of celebrities and do some unethical stuff with them. Because there's a downside with this uh, uncensored uh, approach of um, uh, stable diffusion. Uh, because people have very sick imagination sometimes they can uh, they and they do do like uh, child pornography or uh, extreme gore with uh, dismemberment and blood and uh, extreme porn of celebrities and stuff like that and it's an agent you can also do revenge porn uh, like take photos of your uh, a girl you know and do some uh, uh, porn rendition of her so there's a downside to this uh, liberties that uh, stable diffusion um, has. But uh, I think these are very, very, uh, very isolated cases. So I think the freedom that you get for the majority of people uh, is, uh, makes up for the downside. Yeah, so this is the training set with just a couple of images, nothing much. You can do this yourself. It's it's really, really easy. I mean, uh, you run a Google Colab, which is uh, like some sort of virtual machine, but for all intents and purposes, it's just a website where you upload your uh, photos. You set up a couple of parameters, like three or four. Uh, and you run it and it trains. And then you take the model that it outputs and you put it into your stable diffusion uh, installation folder and you use it as a as normal stable diffusion but with the keyword that you added uh, there. So in my case, I just set up a keyword that is called Aurel Manea in one word. And then I do Aurel Manea as a cyborg uh, in a cyberpunk uh, with glowing eyes and uh, colorful background and it just works. Uh, what else do we have unstable diffusion that is important? You can also troll celebrities. Ah, this is one I like. This you cannot do with mid-journey because it cannot render you from... It cannot re-render you. I like this one because it also generated my name, but differently, because all AIs have this problem with text. They don't understand text. So I got Aulorel, which I love, and I think it's going to be my nickname from now. And stuff like this. Um, I can do this forever. I generated 500 images in um, half an hour. Because stable diffusion, by the way, is really fast. On my GPU, uh, on a 3080, it takes around three, three seconds per image. And I'm going to do a demo if we have time. Yeah, you can also troll uh, celebrities. Uh, like, one morning I wake up, I'm going to do Lucian Mandruza. So I did 100 photos of Lucian Mandruza for no apparent reason, except I just wanted to do. I think I saw some posts. He looked like, uh, hey, I could troll him. He ignored the images he didn't want to share or anything. But you get the idea. You can do this forever. You never get bored because you can always reprompt. You can always find new words. By the way, for prompting, one good place to start would be the site that is called lexica.art. Uh, Lexica that art contains uh, uh, 10 million images uh, and prompts that were uh, generated during the stable diffusion uh, beta. They scraped the Discord server and uh, they uploaded everything there. So they're also free to use in any way you want because the terms of condition were that these images you generate uh, belong to the community. You don't have any rights for them, you can use them, anyone can use them. But it's good to start prompting. Yeah, uh, and this will be controversial. There's a bit of uh, nudity. You can also do nudity. I didn't exaggerate. It's just, it's, it's tasteful, I hope. But you can also do this. Please, if you're easily offended, don't look. Like Pixar uh, Hitler. Why not? Almost got me banned. Uh, don't worry, it's just trolling, it's just edgy humor. I don't have, uh, I, am, I don't endorse or anything. I just like to troll. Hmm? 
Uh, Facebook is offended, and one in a hundred people is going to be offended. I, I calculated and I saw from the comments and everything, and it's going to report the image. Um, I experimented with uh, traction on this, and I found out uh, it, it, it was a social experiment. I tested uh, how much traction the post will get on Facebook, on a social uh, media where people know each other and uh, they're afraid to show what they like, what they truly like. I tested on Reddit, where it got a lot of traction, but eventually one uh, admin banned the post. And then it was on 9gag nine nine that it went on front page. So it's interesting to see where people stand on ideology and uh, political correctness and uh, where they're afraid to show that they like something because they're going to be judged or uh, stigmatized. I don't know. I, I didn't really care. Oh, I should have held this closer. Stable Diffusion has also a lot of other cool uh, tools that you don't have in other AIs. Well, actually, you do sort of in DALI, but like I said, it's too expensive and it's not worth it. You have um, image to image that you have now in uh, Mid Journey. This was one test I did uh, three months ago. Hey, I'll draw something in paint like a child would and then see if I can generate something uh, based on it. It was a simple prompt, beautiful landscape photography, blue sky, visible sun, mountains, grass, a lake, reflections, dramatic lightning, art station. This is what a prompt uh, usually looks like. Yeah, you can literally take children's uh, drawings and make them uh, look uh, wonderful. You also have uh, outpainting. In case uh, you want to extend an image, you can prompt the rest of it and it's going to continue it. If there's only half a head in the photo, you can extend it and generate uh, the rest or the legs if they're missing. You also have in painting where you just uh, select something with a mask and you reprompt it. Okay, I want the glasses on uh, this girl's face and it, it generates glasses. Okay, I want red lips instead of uh, blue. I don't know what it was in the first. And you, you keep doing this so you can actually art direct an image. You, you're not stuck with the original uh, image as you are with Mid Journey. Because sometimes you need this. You need to create a character and you get a very good image and you, boy, I wish it had this. Uh, it's really nice. I know, I'm not sure we're going to have time to uh, open Stable Diffusion and experiment with it. Uh, yeah, but it's still money based, uh, credit based. It's still like years. Uh, behind uh, a version of stable diffusion like automatic 111, which is like this. Actually, now we have time for a little uh, demo. This is automatic 111 version. As you can see, there's a lot of settings, a lot of tools, a lot of scripts. It, it extends forever. You can do animation with it. By the way, the animation you saw here running was generated uh, with uh, stable diffusion. It took me, I, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to open the animation. It took me tw two minutes to prompt it and, I don't know, half an hour to render it. But you can do really complex animation. Uh, you, um, you probably saw a lot of videos on the internet like this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, because of me. me now? No. It, it doesn't make sense. Even if I could, it would take half an hour, one hour to render. It's not so straight, uh, straightforward. I, I don't even have the animation uh, uh, extension installed. But anyway, you've probably have seen a lot of these uh, videos on the internet. Uh, other videos were as uh, cool videos. Like this is not mine. I just downloaded it to have something to show here. But you know it when you see them. They're really glitchy. They don't have a temporal coherency. I'm not sure it works. Hello. It actually works. You, you have these artifacts that are based on some, uh, some of the problems with uh, current AIs. And that is temporal coherency. But it looks very artsy, and you'll see hundreds of them, thousands of them uh, on the internet soon. 
by the way, this is not mine. This is. Uh, I think this is uh, in memory of someone's mother. It's 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 sort of grotesque, but it's really really cool. But this this is a really worked uh, video. But it goes like this. In this case, you add. Uh, I'm gonna pause it or uh, set it to to really low. It it works like this. It, it, you use an input video, and on that video you prompt for them. So you say, based on this image, this image has uh, two old women on wheelchairs, even though in the original videos there were two young women. And you change the prompt at a certain key phrase, key frames. At key frame zero you have this, and then and it becomes a little girl instead of an old person. So you get really trippy, really interesting uh, artsy animations. They're really not that hard to do. I think you have put a lot more work in the videos that you use here than in the um, prompting. And it's really cool. I'm not going to insist with this because it's not mine. All I did was pure crap, like um, like this morphing between uh, photos. They're completely generated and the morphing is generated and the music is uh, generated, by the way. I quite like the music, to be honest. Because, yeah, you can generate AI music and AI text and uh, AI everything nowadays. AI code. And another one I did with uh, Brunkush. It's still simple prompt, zoom in. The AI try constantly tries to regenerate based on the morphing image, and you have artifacts. It always morphs. It's always interesting. It's like a dream. It's actually a lot more similar to a dream. But you see the patterns that define uh, Brancusch, the type of uh, geometry and uh, sculptures. So yeah, with uh, with the disco diffusion, with the stable diffusion, you can also di have this animation. There's a lot of tools there. Coming back to it, uh, sorry, I cannot play the full videos because we have little time. Uh, this is the interface. You have uh, the prompt, the base settings. Uh, one second. Generating, uh, generating takes as little as this. One, let's see, one, two, three seconds. Multiple heads, too much resolution, wait. One, two, three, four seconds. It's uh, slower because I'm uh, streaming. And let's generate another. Uh, this is a prompt I took from Lexica from here, the site I was telling you uh, about. It's simple portrait painting by uh, Ayman Valani Kamala Khan as a punk fairy ultra realistic concept art. Intricate details, eerie, highly detailed, photorealistic octane render 8K, Unreal Engine art by Argem and Greg Rotowski, and Charlie Bowater and Magali Villeneuve and Alphonse Puncha. Greg Rutowski, it's uh, actually the most interesting case. Uh, actually, we get to the other interesting subject now, uh, the existing uh, artist. Greg Rutowski is a well-known uh, digital artist that uh, people used in prompts with his name. So I think 5% uh, of all generated images uh, have his name in the prompt. So he got really mad about it. He started writing articles and uh, complaining and getting uh, revolted and then, uh, uh, talking about uh, how uh, classical artists are affected by this and how they are stealing their style. But uh, I, I think he's, I think regarding himself, he's exaggerating because he's not going to be affected by this. Other artists are going to be affected by this. He works in a big studio. He does uh, concept art. Uh, uh, the studios use them for use him for his name also, not only for his uh, the quality of his artwork. So he's not affected. But there are going to be artists affected by this, and especially small-time artists that used to do commissions, for example, 
hey, I need a cover for a magazine or for a uh, album or uh, stuff like this, or stock photos. People are not going to be buying from artists now. They're going to generate themselves. So it's go it's going to be a hard transition towards these new tools. I think it the AI generation that uh, we're seeing now is going to be complex comparable to the industrial revolution on many levels. It's the same kind of automatization, but for uh, the creative field now. Uh, they call it generative AI, and it's very broad, yeah? The what? They call it generative AI. Well, there's a lot of AI. This is generative AI. You have... Uh, everything digital, but not only. I mean, uh, you have... Uh, Mm, uh, the doctors, the medical system that are going to be affected because you now have AIs that are much better at giving diagnostic uh, than a human. It, it just works because the AI knows how to see patterns we humans are unable to see. You have uh, in the justice systems, AI is giving, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, guilty verdicts or stuff like this or uh, giving you an approximation of the chances of, people, of a convicted person to re uh, recidive, what is the word? Recidiva? Uh, I, I forgot what it is in English. If, uh, and I'm not going to be talking about governments. I mean, this, is, uh, this goes so deep and uh, the dangers are so much on political levels and military levels that uh, I'm too little to talk about this. But I can talk about it a bit from uh, about my perspective uh, regarding arts in general, because uh, AIs tend to do two things: um, minimize the importance of uh, existing artists or ty some types of the existing artists. We'll see if they evolve, uh, if the job adapt to this, and we we'll still have digital artists that use new and more powerful tools to generate something that current AIs cannot do. So I think the main word in the following uh, years is going to be adaptation, not uh, existing skills, but the ability to adapt to the constant uh, change. Because in a way, we're driving deep into uh, singularity. I, I'm starting to believe the theory now that I see everything happening so fast in a couple of months, getting from nothing to better images than uh, human artists. It was unconceivable one year ago. You would have asked me, do you think we're going to get there to, at some point? I don't know, maybe 20 years. And it happened fast, and it happens really fast in all domains. I'm in a bubble, a graphics bubble, but I assume if I go deep into any domain, it's going to be the same thing. Most people are not, not aware of any of this. I'm not aware of uh, stuff that goes on in other domains, and most people are not aware of stuff that goes on in all of them. So. I expect everything will come together and we'll have, we'll have huge changes in society, in everything. How difficult is to install this table? Uh, it's quite trivial, honestly, but for most people there seems uh, to be a small bottleneck when they get scared because you have to install Python. Uh, what is Python? What is this code stuff? But you just need to install Python with uh, one checkbox there. You just need to install um, a JIT. You just install it that way. You just need to download the code from uh, GitHub. Uh, th this is how you start. You go to Google and you write automatic 1111. And the first link is going to be this. It's going to be a GitHub where you can download the code from the right here. Uh, you have a tutorial here on what you need to do in the lower part of the page. You need to, uh, what is it? Install Python, install JIT, download the stable diffusion uh, code. You can do this from the right button up there. You need to download the, the stable diffusion model, which is the, like I said, the brain of it. You get, it, uh, you get a link from dependency here. It's going to take you to a site where you need to check that you accept the terms and conditions. Uh, and then you just run this web UI user. And it's going to take like five minutes or stuff to install. 
and after that, it's going to open a command prompt. I mean, it already opened the command prompt window, but it's going to give you here uh, a link. It's going to say uh, HTTP and one IP address, and you copy it, and you paste it in the browser, and you get the interface. From here, you start. This is the prompt. This is uh, sampling steps. Usually, you don't need to touch this. Leave this and this here. A lot of people uh, are going to say that these settings do a lot of stuff, but I experimented a lot, and there's nothing to gain from changing those settings. You have the weight and height of the image. You have uh, the option to restore faces. Uh, you have this important CFG scale that you tell the AI, hey, follow my prompt closer or be wilder. So this is an important setting, but it's really straightforward to use. So all in all, with Python and uh, Git and everything, how long it takes the whole installation? Mm, 20 minutes. So? Yeah. Cool. And after that, it works uh, directly yeah. with uh, your uh, computer? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, but you need uh, to have a decent uh, video card. Uh, like I have a GTX 3080, which is good enough. No, no. Well, uh, stable diffusion, uh, it's many things. It's not one thing. Because it's uh, open source, you have 100 versions, 100 forks of them. Some of them work in the cloud, like uh, in a Google Colab. Uh, in, you run it uh, there. It's a bit slower. Uh, in a Google Colab 3, I think you can only use it for three hours a day. Then you have to wait 24 hours. Uh, you have sites that run it for free, for free. Even Lexica site, the one where you take uh, prompts from, I think uh, has generate. Doesn't have generate anymore. Generate. I think you can also do it here. Uh, beautiful girl. Mm. Uh, the rule of thumb here is uh, you have mid-journey, you have uh, DALI 2, and all the rest of hundreds of uh, image generated that are all basically stable diffusion, because they took the model from stable diff diffusion and put them in, in their own architecture. So you're better off with just using stable diffusion. I, I think uh, Studio is official one. Yeah, it is official one, but uh, it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, it's ten 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 dollar for a thousand images, but if you increase the resolution, uh, it was when I uh, started. But again, Dream Studio is nothing compared to. You only use it if you don't, if you want to pay the money and uh, you are okay with the lack of option. Let's see. I I haven't opened in a while. I guess, I guess. You also have 200 images or so when you log in for the first time. Let's see where it's at now. Yeah, there's a lot more uh, options, but uh, still, it's not my cup of tea. I mean, yeah, you can uh, actually you can use uh, Dream Studio. This was the most important one that I should have told you. If you need to pick up Stable Diffusion and just use it, you use uh, Dream Studio. It's uh, dreamstudio.ai. But I'm not, like I said, I'm not a really fan of that because uh, it was left behind. It started uh, when Stable Diffusion started, when it was launched and it was tested. And it, it didn't move in any way compared to community-driven versions like uh, Stable Diffusion, like uh, the automatic one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, about in painting. Okay, let's say I, I like this photo. Yeah, the hand is off, but whatever. We can send it to InPaint, for example. Actually, for this, I'm going to use a separate uh, model that is especially for uh, in painting. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a bit. Blah, 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 blah. In the meantime, let's paint a bit here. Where is the size of the brush? And like I said, we'll just mask this part. And we'll write in the prompt. It's really hard to write with the hand on the mic. Uh, wearing glasses. And see if we get glasses. And voila! What do you want to do? 
Lexica Yeah, Lexica. Uh, yeah, I get, uh, as you can see, I get distracted a lot. Thank you for uh, reminding me. I, I, I can, it doesn't work now. I, I, what I mean is that you have a lot of versions of stable diffusion um, that you can use for free if you don't want to install it, but I don't know any of them. You need to, the way to navigate around stable diffusion is being part of the community. Join the Discord server from stable diffusion. Um, watch Reddit. There's a stable diffusion um, uh, subreddit. I also have a very big, uh, big uh, Facebook uh, group for stable diffusion. And ask the people there, uh, just ask around, hey guys, do you know any good uh, free version of stable diffusion? And they're going to answer. Search on YouTube. You're going to find the answers. That I don't have any for you right now because I, I'll show you the version I use, which, by the way, is by far the most advanced one, and it's recognized as the most advanced one, even though it's made by a guy that was banned from the community of stable diffusion. And he's a persona non grata right now. But that's how uh, open source works. Automatic one one one. Yeah, I think he's not uh, officially on the Discord, but he's the go-to guy, and uh, all the support on the Discord is gonna tell you go to to him. So uh, on the surface, they need to keep this distance from him because of the problems uh, they had with a certain leak uh, of an AI model. And he, in his version of uh, stable diffusion, he added support for using that leaked model. And the leaked model was from a company that was a friend uh, of stable diffusion in um, uh, AMAD. So he had to choose, be friends with uh, this company and uh, collaborate, or uh, keep uh, automatic 111, which I don't know what his real name was. I don't, I'm not sure people know. Uh, so he had to choose and he had to ban him. But the, the how do you, when you make uh, animations or videos, how do you manage uh, to keep consistency? Like, are there tools for this? Well, uh, <coughs> it depends on what type of videos. You usually don't keep consistency. You <coughs> I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, tempo so temporal consistency. you are making an animation with some uh, character, and uh, ah. you don't want this character to dramatically change between frames. I think the only way to properly do that, there are tutorials for this. You, what you need to do mostly is use prompts that are based on uh, public persons, but you change them a bit. So you make somebody look like Brad Pitt, but with blonde hair and stuff like that. So you base your character on him and you use the same words and you get some consistency. But for a more advanced character, it's really hard. I think you need to train the model with uh, with uh, an image or m more of what you want. I it's really hard at this point, really. I think one of n the big next steps is gonna be this thing where you you describe something and you save it as a thing, as a concept, and then you'll reuse it how many times you want. So it's gonna work, uh, you'll have consistency. It, I'm, I haven't seen anything uh, in the works of this, but I think it's the natural thing uh, to have next. Are there any ways to fix random seeds? Like if you, like usually in models, if you want to generate a model to like uh, give, uh, uh, so like for example, gun, you want it to be consistent result, you fix the random seed number, yeah. so random will be the same and the same prompt will lead to the same result. Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah, I did it because uh, it's also a type of uh, changing uh, certain things because uh, you have uh, uh, in painting, yeah, but you can also use the same seed and change the prompt a little. So it looks more like this, it looks more like a bird, but it's going to look similar. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it really breaks apart. So you have one change of one letter of one uh, dot or space in the prompt and it's a completely different um, image. But uh, other than that, I don't know why you want to use the same seeds. Well, because uh, if I like, like, like what it generated for me for consistency, I want to 
like maybe a little bit modify it, but uh, if I don't have, if I don't fix the scene, the same prompt so it will give me quite different result. Yeah, but that's what I was talking about, about uh, directing the image and changing little things. Yeah, that's the only use case I found for it. It's also... No, no, no. The, the seed, it's, uh, uh, this uh, diffusion model work like this. Uh, they are also a bit of uh, uh, noise removal tools. They start with a noise. And then based on that, that noise, you tell it, hey, remove the noise, unnoise it. So the image uh, is described like I wrote in the prompt. And the seed is basically the random seed that the noise is going to be generated at. So the noise is always different. So the results is going to be always different because it's a different seed. Uh, so having the same seed means you have the same noise. It means you have the same results if you have the same settings, the same model, the same uh, sampler, the same uh, CFG scale. All these settings are going to be saved in the files, in the image files. So you can always uh, re-import the previous image file so, because you want to open the stable diffusion and continue later. So all the images are going to contain all the info necessary to pick, to restart uh, doing the same style or the same uh, object. Yeah. I don't know. I, I now have, is that time to check my phone and see what I'm missing? Yeah, actually, I remember. Uh, another thing that I found interesting for myself, which is not on the technical part, it's more on the psychological part, it's uh, that you can use it as a therapy. Uh, I myself suffer with depression or uh, issues sometimes. Uh, so it helps me <coughs> exercise my demons to some extent. That way sometimes I generate really dark imagery. Uh, like, oh, sure. yeah, okay, sure. Let me just... Uh, yeah. What? This ah, this is my journey. I was trying to generate some Bucharest in another uh, style, more anime, more uh, Japanese. I was just experimenting. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, I cannot, uh, I have to. Uh, it's not Studio Ghibli, but uh, a lot of artists have Studio Ghibli style. Uh, there yeah. Uh, I, I can show you the prompt. Uh, the prompt is like this. Busy street in Bucharest on a snowy day, night, marquee lightning. I don't know what that means, but I saw it somewhere and it was nice. Anime, pop art, color realization, brush strokes, third person view, style of Makoto Shinhai. I don't know who Makoto Shinhai is. Eh? Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, you know this stuff. We need to talk more. So yeah, uh, like I said, uh, uh, the dark images, dark images. But well, let's just open the stable diffusion uh, folder and see what we have here. Ah, no, 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 tiger, no. The underwater, no, the lion. Uh, I didn't see any tiger. I don't even remember. I know you should. Ah, yeah, 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 I remember this one. Uh, this one an experiment with style, uh, and I chose the tiger as the subject. It doesn't mean... Uh, I, I'm not in a, even sure what the prompt was, because I experiment a lot. I have to look up the prompt. But like I said, really dark imagery, it's stuff like... stuff like this. Or like this. Or this. Or this. I have childhood issues, apparently. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's soft. It doesn't have blood, but it's still dark. It's uh, geigerish in a way. It's, uh, it's dystopian also. Actually, it started, it drove me, but it started from a, a dystopian image of a baby cyborg. I wanted to make a statement about uh, the future of humanity, so I made the baby cyborgs. And also the cyborg uh, Neanderthal man that uh, you used for the event. No, this one is secret because it's personal and it's because uh, it's part of... Uh, I, it's really important to me, this one. 
Actually, you can see it up there. So if there's a recording of this, it's written right in the file name, so no secret. I don't have that many dark images. I try to do Bucharest in Geiger style also. It kind of looks like Bucharest, but it's not really Bucharest. The, the, the first one was the Patriarch? I'm not sure. I, I didn't uh, direct this. It, I just said it give me the prompt is Bucharest by IHR Giger. Also, you can see it has uh, weights in them, so you give certain words certain weights, so they're more powerful in the prompt, because sometimes you don't get something even if it's in a prompt, so you say, hey, concentrate like this, make this more like this. Uh, this is more important, more important. So I keep adding weights to them, uh, like separation with commas. So this HR Geiger is a one of the most famous uh, artists in, in history. He was the one who invented the alien and the alien universe, and he's, uh, he's really, really famous. Uh, his uh, Prometheus is uh, set in a world similar to what he creates. Um. Really? I know Geiger, I grew up with Geiger, probably some of my issues are because I grew up with Geiger. I had this, uh, yeah, yeah, I had this huge Geiger album in my house. So, yeah, well, like mesh mixes between Pixar and Geiger. This is Geiger, this is the pattern that you see in Geiger, by the way. See this organic stuff, alien-like. So Pixar goes well with Geiger, apparently. Yeah, I, I don't know, like I said, I made more than 10,000 images, sometimes just stupid stuff like dark scuba diving. Or This was before uh, everybody was doing it, by the way. Now everybody is doing it. Because, like I said, if you look at the first page of Mid Journey, Everything is amazing. I mean, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is also amazing. And here comes the problem that I wanted to talk about. Uh, when everything is amazing, nothing is. I think it's also a quote from um, The Incredibles. <coughs> if everybody keeps doing this uh, beautiful artworks, that uh, mixes the same symbols and the same styles and the same uh, artists, everything becomes dull. And I ran into this problem. I look at the feed now, uh, both in social media and on Mid Journey, and I'm all meh, meh, meh. So true art is going to go beyond the level of cool graphics, that's for sure. And it needs to find new ways of expression because we're there. I mean, everything is perfect now. Not really perfect, but you can see these are incredible. If you saw this on an art, uh, art site, they were all, wow, these guys are really good. It's, it's lovely, everything is lovely. The de details are there, this is ready to print. And because there's so ma many and I generated so many, I don't want to print any. None of them have real value to me, except maybe the one with the organic stuff. But it, it's one of the issues that we're gonna have. <coughs> Also, like I said, uh, over-generating images screw up your limbic system in the brain, so your reward systems are all off. So how you help this studio well, it, it just did by itself, because like I said, it exercises demons that you have. Uh, yeah. yeah, it certainly improved because I was depressed until uh, five months ago. I was in a bit of a crisis. I still am in a bit of a crisis, but it's more a bit of a crisis than it used to be. Because now, if I'm not feeling very good, what ideas do I have? I just generate this. So it's good therapy, but it also can lead to more problems if you abuse it. It's only always in the balance. A new addiction. Yeah, it's a new addiction. Yeah. Nowadays, everything is an addiction. Social media is an addiction. Uh, consuming media like this is an addiction. And now, creating media like this is an addiction. So, complicated. How long do you spend in one day with these tools? Sometimes I spend, uh, sometimes I spend 
30, 40, 13, 14 hours. Sometimes in the beginning, like this. Right now, I don't know. Sometimes an hour, sometimes not at all, because I have other addictions, writing uh, controversial stuff on social media about generating images. But it still relates to images. Like, uh, I wrote that post that went a bit viral about, hey, everything is dull now, everything is the same. And also the censorship of these uh, sites grow bigger and bigger by the day. So art is going to be more and more limited if we don't do something about it, like support open uh, source tools and uh, drive the community. Let's ask the public also. Yeah. What do you think about it? Maybe tell them more. What about the online people? Do they ask questions in the chat? Maybe yes, you can check what they ask. No, oh, let yeah. you ask. Imagine what they might have asked. So it's streaming or how do you yeah. and but there shouldn't be a chat uh, when you stream on YouTube or somewhere. It's not on YouTube, it's on a separate channel. Mm -hmm. So request.eu. Mm -hmm. And they don't have chat. So if you have questions I, I think it's you, not only you are surprised. I think this question is uh, what do you think uh, are the practical use cases besides playing training, uh, forward the, uh, the AI and besides uh, generating a lot of uh, amazing pictures which uh, uh, offers up to the, your threshold uh, and your document you, you yeah. uh, more like um, let's, be, let's say average day to day uh, use case for uh, well the day-to-day -day usage will be because people, I think, more and more are going to start expressing themselves in images like they do in words. I mean, like emojis started replacing a bit words. Images, which are advanced emojis. The visual are, culture. Huh? The visual culture. The visual culture. It's just the language evolving in some way because it, it's instant uh, generation. You just think on something and a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So we'll see more and more of this and uh, we'll get to the what's coming next part, which is going to be really exciting. And that would be probably the next thing will be text or image to 3D model. I've seen a lot of uh, research papers and there's uh, meta, no, 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 not meta, meta is for video. Uh, and there's some, uh, I think based on stable diffusion also AI models for this. It's really in its infancy. I didn't find any motive to play around with it because you get uh, not really 3D, you get this cloud like voxel. I don't know what the, name, the technical term is, but it's like voxels. It's 3D pixels in space. It doesn't have surface and polygons. So they're cool and all, but there's not no practical way to use them. Yeah, we don't know. Well, well, I mean, uh, as a practical <coughs> way, I use it for presentations. Like when I uh, uh, usually I spend a lot of time, especially when I present for like uh, diverse audience, uh, I spend a lot of time doing Google image search to select uh, nice pictures. And uh, now I just type, uh, it doesn't always work where. And for me, actually, so I did a presentation on explainable machine learning. For me, for some reason, Dali got better images than stable diffusion. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was useful for me. And uh, now also, uh, like, uh, you can, like, what you design, you can print it, you can post it in, like, uh, on your social media, you can promote. Uh, I am still searching for a good, uh, by the way, did you check uh, 3D model generators? That's what we were talking about. That, uh, that's what I said, uh, that they're not that useful at this point. Because I have 3D printer at home and... Uh, I built my own 3D printer at some point. I also have 3D printer. Yeah, and the interesting stuff, if we can uh, get something uh, printable out of what we generate, because it can be useful. At this point, there is a solo quality, I mean, it, first of all, it doesn't generate polygons, it ge generates uh, a sort of voxels, volumes uh, in space. So they need to be converted to polygons, and once you convert them to polygons, they look like complete crap. 
and mm, it doesn't make sense. You need to clean up a lot in ZBrush or stuff uh, with them. And but the technology. You need just to, um, you need to prepare it for uh, the printing. You actually don't really, if there is software that can uh, uh, do it, uh, if Cura can do it directly from boxes, maybe there are proper plugins for this? Yeah, but, but the. the, the, the uh, no, the slicing is not a problem. The topology doesn't make sense. It's ugly. It's distorted. It's not. Uh, doesn't have uh, surface features. It makes sense in the voxel because uh, even if you have uh, like one centimeter of uh, what should I call them transparent uh, pixels. It looks okay from the distance, but it's uh, all sparse there. It's uh, it's not concrete like a polygon is. So the converter ha converter have to estimate what the surface would look like, and it just doesn't work properly at this point. The technology will get there eventually, uh, but I think it will take a year or so until it's uh, really usable. But funny thing, there was this uh, scam site called Kaedim. I don't know if you heard of them. They offer this surface of uh, text to 3D, and their models were uh, incredibly good, uh, low poly with good topology, with edge loops and stuff like this, ready to use in a game or so. Uh, I, I'm not sure because, like I said, uh, it was a big scam in the end. They actually had people in the w modeling for you, so that's why it took like. Okay, now wait 50 minutes for the AI to generate your model. And somebody found the, the, um, the work. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure they removed the images uh, from there. Let's see. I st I'm still under Discord server and see them fooling people into thinking. It, it's absurd. I mean. Why are they doing this? Sorry? Why are they doing this? For money. Of they pay the. It's not only paid. You paid, uh, I think, uh, $400 uh, per month for uh, 20 models. You're better off just modeling them yourself. But pro probably they wanted to show us that they have machine learning. They say we can scale, so we can get investment. Because if you just have freelance uh, Indian or whatever... Uh, probably they're freelance uh, Indians. Yeah, but you cannot scale because there is a limited number of freelancers that can like, do work as fast. But if you say, I have AI, please give us investments, we will scale. Yeah, they're, they're, they're hunting for investment, basically. They did have a round of invest, investments. And probably there's some truth to what they say. They're not technically lying. They have a base AI that ge generates probably just uh, based on depth. Uh, something that doesn't make sense is not usable. But it has uh, a depth. It's a projection seen from one side. And uh, the artist uh, can uh, just redo everything because it's useless basically but technically they're not lying and they came up with a press release saying that this is our workflow the AI generates a base uh, 3d model and then an artist comes to clean it up but this is vague it can mean anything what they actually say is that the AI generates a base uh, model that the artist throws away and uh, redraws it. I know because I'm into 3D arts, I can see what it does. But I was fooled by them at some point. So that's one thing that's going to be coming. The other is, uh, of course, uh, text to video. We have a lot of uh, potential here. Let's see upcoming AIs. We'll have uh, make a video from Meta. And we'll have uh, image and video from, uh, I think it's from Google. I'm not sure. But basically, they do the same thing. These are all videos generated from uh, prompts. A teddy bear painting a portrait. Uh, what is it? This is with input image, like image to image, but image to video. In video to video, apparently, they have also this. Uh, and there is image also, which is, seems a bit more advanced, but it's the same thing. So we'll see this in the near uh, future. You, you will do these videos for bas basically just posting uh, on Facebook for a time uh, using AI. Of course, uh, AI-generated music is already here. It works well. If you need uh, some music for the YouTube video just generated, for example, I use Iwa, iwa.com. 
uh, you'll have uh, you have also general um, large language models like uh, GPT-3, where you can just interrogate and hey, AI, help me solve this problem, tell me something, generate a job description uh, for a certain job that I need to use this, or just uh, enumerate all the um, mammals in the world, put them in uh, rows of, uh, I don't know, uh, furry or not furry, or stuff like this. Things that you cannot generally find uh, on the internet, but uh, the model knows. You can actually ask advice. There is GPT it's not already, it's coming. And it's gonna be, I think, uh, a lot of people get fooled by GPT-3 and uh, it, uh, it uh, succeeds in the Turing test. But for me, most of the time, it's just crap at this point. Uh, yeah, I, I Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from uh, what, what was it? AI Dungeon from the company that. Uh, I don't remember, I played it. It's the problem is that they have a limited depth of consistency, so we forget the story points. Like the point of Oh, yeah, yeah, but in the, I think you need to. Uh, I think this is general. He was a historian of religion for those of you who don't, never heard about him. And he was also a novelist, like Eliade, his, uh, his uh, mentor. And he, wo he had many works in progress when he was. Ah, and complete them, yeah, it works. But, but there were the, uh, the content of the books prepared, and we can train maybe with the books that he produced. Yeah, probably what you should do is uh, train with the book that he produced and also the, 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 books on him, on books. the books on him, the books that he produced and also maybe some of the influences that he had so it has more articles, knowledge, articles. articles, everything about them. And yeah, you can do that. It actually works. I saw this uh, podcast of uh, Steve Jobs and uh, Joe Rogan together. And it was uh, it failed uh, on a lot of points, but it was quite amazing to see. It's uh, what it's called uh, podcast.ai. Every week they have a new podcast with uh, people. That it's sometimes they did. I think Einstein or uh, what was it? Uh, the genius. The genius, like uh, Steve Jobs in that case, and Joe Rogan, which I also enjoy. I like Joe Rogan, uh, and I watch it a lot. What? Joe Rogan? No. It's on Spotify. Your, uh, your uh, experiment with GPT-3. I, 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 I never saved it. But I think I asked something, hey GPT-3, should social media platforms be responsible uh, in, uh, uh, in front of the law if they screw up and uh, they, uh, uh, they abuse their power? And they just couldn't imagine this. It, it got locked. It was like, uh, you know, how uh, you can... Uh, I'm not sure how it go went that you ask something, a uh, robot, and it, it freezes. I think you guys should know the question uh, that uh, puts uh, an AI in a loop. No, I forgot it also. But anyway, it put it in a loop. And I'm not sure the training that went into it was uh, completely fair. I think they removed a lot of things. And I think it also shows a bias of uh, large companies towards uh, the way things should be. But anyway, it, it fails on a lot of uh, issues. Let's see, EB7, G8F. Yeah, yeah. And we'll go to playground and see. Um, yeah, this is going to be harder with one hand. Hi. Nice to see you again. It's uh, nice to be nice with the AI because you never know when uh, it's going to take over the world and. <laughs> yeah. Fine. 
Can you do you have some questions for uh, her, him, she? Can I don't you know. Something sweet? Write me a poem. A poem uh, about yourself in the style of is that with double M? No. Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson. Is it correct? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Submit. A dwelling possibility, a fairer house than prose, my life a loaded gun that roams in silent seas. I have no need for riches, my thoughts provide me wealth, I live in my own fortress where none can take my health. Sounds like a poem. <laughs> and now something about roses also, and it is the style. Okay. It does sound like a poem, yeah. right? Surely. About, about roses. roses. I hope it's not roses are red. Did it uh, luck? A rose, a fragrance in bloom. A symbol of beauty and grace, its petals show love and compassion that lasts in our hearts and embrace. Cool, is that also right? Yeah, like I said, this uh, we'll just wait for GPT-4. It's going to be amazing. How, so, about, how about generative AI in the games industry? I, I try to do this, but no one listens to me. Hey. Uh, Hey GPT, write me the story of a game in the style that you want and uh, give me some monetization options for it. Uh, give me some art direction that you think it will sell and you like also and it's also fun to make for us. And it wrote me quite an impressive uh, business, plan. business plan, yeah. What types of items to monetize, what type of monetization system, is it premium, is it premium? It was premium of course because, yeah. These are Tools more powerful than people imagine. If it can write a poem this good, maybe the model that uh, uh, gives us for a game, it's actually efficient and it knows what it's doing better than we do. Let's, let's one more try and this. Yeah. So we have Q and A while we drink the champagne. Okay. Agrees, yeah? Okay, so write the beginning of a novel in the style of Cartares. Cartarescu. I think it knows Romanian. I think it knows Romanian. Uh, right. Right at the beginning. Uh, is it a double N? I forgot what the name of a novel by Cartarescu. Yes. But in Romanian. I'm not sure. I think it's uh, it, it also learned Romanian also. I never tried, but not Romanian. Romanian. No, no. I wrote uh, Romania instead of Romanian. The sun has already set on the horizon, casting its lay last rays of light over the small city of Romania. Yeah, it was about Romania because I wrote Romania there. You have no idea how many people uh, use this uh, f to write articles. Uh. I did an interview. Ah, it knows Romanian. Yeah, I did an interview with a Russian ambassador on GPT-3. Yeah? Okay. Luna se arată deja pe cerul nopții. Sorry about English speakers. Trimițând ultimele sale raze de lumină peste orașul mic din România. Okay. Totul era liniștit și calme. It gets some words wrong. Yeah, it, it doesn't know Romanian so well uh, as it does English, but we'll see with GPT-4. Sorry, I had to put uh, the mic now. Well, I guess okay, that's, that's about, it. yeah, I think that's about everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's not uh, plagiarism free. 
I think you need to run it to another with another AI to check for plagiarism. But it, it does the job. I'm, I'm just going to see where writing uh, Facebook posts only with AI leads to. Yeah, it was a big scandal because it was, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, they published some papers uh, using AI and they got, uh, they got accepted, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But how do they find out that they were, uh, they bragged about it afterwards, right? <laughs> Other than that, uh, you wouldn't really know. Un unless you use another AI because you have AIs that can uh, see the patterns that we don't and they know this is written by AI. So you have AIs to see if images are generated by AI, but then you have AIs that learn from these AIs that we, it's going to be AI wars all over the place. Not you know, yeah, and eventually we'll have.